this video we first visit the picturesque Lake Tekapo. Located in the UNESCO Dark Sky Reserve, we will relax in hot springs, then drive to see the highest mountain in New Zealand, and hike the famous Hooker Valley track. We will stay in the town of Wanaka for a couple of days, and visit the lavender farm, and New Zealand's third largest national park Mount Aspiring. Queenstown is our main destination. We will see and do lots of exciting things in Queenstown. The last but not the least, the crown jewel of our trip, Milford Sound. So sit back, grab your favourite drink and enjoy our video. Hey, and don't forget to give us a like. New Zealand is one of the least populated countries in the world. It consists of the North and South Island. We are flying to the South Island. It's our first trip to New Zealand. We chose the most popular tourist destination. What is the speed limit? 100 kilometers an hour. 100, or well, about 62 miles an hour. But they're also like in Australia. Six the same as Australia. $2.07. That is mega expensive. Mega expensive. Straight as this road, they're getting close to their mountains. It's long, the longest bridge in New Zealand, by the way. This one? Yes. The Rakai Bridge was built in 1939 and is just 58 k's outside Christchurch. Driving out of Christchurch, the scenery was pretty ordinary. The closer we drive towards the mountains, the better the landscape gets. Look how narrow the bridge is. Barely. On our way to Lake Tikapa, we stopped for lunch in a small town of Fairly. We've been recommended this bakehouse. In New Zealand, meat pies are very popular, as popular as in Australia. And the meat pies in this place are delicious. Do not miss the pork belly pie. What did you order? Uh, pork belly pie. Pork belly pie. I ordered chowder. And it is delicious too. Very delicious. Lake Tupiga is a really small town. It's popular for its lake and stargazing. We're heading towards a small church, which you can see in the distance. It is one of the most photographed buildings in New Zealand. Church of St. Shepherd, yeah. Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd. The water in the lake is crystal clear and a beautiful turquoise colour. The beautiful colour of the water comes from the glaciers. The lake is surprisingly deep. In the deepest part is 120 metres. Lake Tipica is part of the International Dark Sky Reserve. It has some of the darkest night skies in the world. You have a chance to spot the Milky Way and the Southern Cross in the sky. Our chances were slim because the sky was cloudy. According to the bottle scale which measures the night sky brightness, Lake Tekapa night sky has level 2 which is fantastic. The number of tourists going to New Zealand increased dramatically after the release of Lord of the Rings movies from 2001. Thanks to the director Peter Jackson, lots of people have discovered the beauty of New Zealand. The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit were one of the most ambitious film projects ever taken. The films won 17 Academy Awards and was nominated many times. The films were made across the whole country of New Zealand. 
There are over 150 key locations. Mount Cook National Park is one of them, just 105 kilometres from Lake Tekapa. Might be able to zoom in on it. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see it. Hi everyone, we have arrived at the Mount Cook National Park. We are at the White Horse Hill campground and we are going to do the Hooker Valley track, which is the most popular here, with lots of beautiful views. So let's do it! It's a reasonably easy 10 km return track. The track starts at the main car park. Along the way you'll cross three swing bridges and enjoy the spectacular views of the glaciers and the mountains. The track ends at the Glacier Lake, where on a clear day you will be able to see the Mount Cook Peak. Mount Cook is the highest peak in New Zealand. It stands 3,724 metres. It is part of the Southern Alps mountain range which extends almost 600 kilometers along the South Island. These mountain ranges were filmed in both of Lord of the Rings trilogies. It was a mesmerizing experience to walk this ancient landscape. Here we are, we made it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lake Tegapo hot pools are filled with water which is not geothermal and it doesn't have healing qualities but it's from an underground source. So is it really hot? It's pretty warm. It's pretty warm. Feels like 38 degrees. Uh, it's only one degree. Really it's warm. Warm and hot. It's hot. Hot here. Yeah, it's because of your arms. It's because of sunburn. It was still great to relax after hiking the Hooker Valley track and for $27 per person it's not expensive. <laughs> Keep in mind there are numerous geothermal hot springs in New Zealand. <laughs> we enjoyed our stay at Lake Tekapo. We think it's a great place, but our journey continues on now to Wanika. It's more than 200 kilometers from Lake Tekapo to Wanika. We stopped in a small town called Dweisel for lunch. Bacon, sausages, tomatoes, oh, hash browns, eggs, mushrooms, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Looks sensational. Can't wait to. I'll have the same.
The Lindus Pass is one of New Zealand's highest roads at 971 metres above sea level. It is an amazing little stop on the road to Wanika. We notice there are many one lane bridges. It's not an issue for New Zealand due to its low traffic density. We just thought it was just a bit unusual. Wanaka is a very pretty town. It's quite big. It has 10,000 residents and it is growing in popularity. It's understandable because Wanaka is so close to ski resorts, national parks and adrenaline sports locations. Wanaka Tree is a big attraction here. It's kind of a symbol. Whether you like it or not, it represents the town. We decided to stay in Wanaka for a couple of days because we wanted to visit Mount Aspiring National Park. Mount Aspiring is New Zealand's third largest national park. There are many cows in New Zealand. Did you know New Zealand is the main exporter of milk worldwide? There are even more sheep. At the moment it's approximately 26 million in New Zealand. That equals around about 6 sheep to every New Zealander. Anyway, we are heading to see the Blue Pools, which is the main attraction of this national park. What was that? Look at the mozzies, look, sand flies. <gasps> look at them all. Jesus. The sand flies are terrible. Make sure you have insect repellent to keep them away. <laughs> but overall, it's an easy 1.5 kilometer return walk from the car park to the Blue Pools. The track leads through Silver Beach Forest to a swing bridge overlooking the pools at the mouth of the Blue River. I'm going to see how cold the water is. It's not too cold, it's very fresh. We have not seen any signs that it is forbidden to swim. So, in theory, you can swim in the blue pools. We did one more interesting hike, Has Pass. It's only 10 kilometers away from the blue pools. The Haas Pass rises to a height of 562 metres above sea level. The climb is steep in places, but the views from the top are rewarding. Who's there? Dan! Can I come in? Oh yes, come in please. Is this the lavender farm? Yes. In New Zealand? Yes. I think I've got the right place then. Okay, come Absolutely. In. Beautiful place. Sensational. The Lavender Farm is less than five kilometers from Wanika. It's a lovely small farm. The lavender wasn't in bloom yet, but we saw lots of animals. Heavens, look at him. He's huge. Yes. 
chocolate ice cream at the lavender farm in Manica is beautiful. Sensation. We love New Zealand, it's a safe and beautiful country. We think Wanika is a bit pricey, but we'll see what awaits us in Queenstown. We're heading off now. From Wanika to Queenstown, it is 75 kilometers. We will make a short stop in historical Arrowtown. Out at the Kaurau Gorge, where the road in Maxstream meets the Kaurau River. There are two small hydroelectricity power stations built in the 1930s. And we only have another 32 kilometers left till we arrive in Arrowtown. Arrowtown is one of the most scenic settlements in New Zealand. It sits alongside the gold-bearing Arrow River and is just 20 minutes from Queenstown. The town was established in 1862 during the height of the gold rush. <laughs> the settlement grew quickly as pioneers constructed cottages, shops, hotels and churches, more than 60 of which can still be seen today. Do you want to drop into the museum? Well, we could if you want. If you want to find out some historical facts about the area, make a visit to the Lakes District Museum. The museum is quite big. The items you see in the museum have been passed down by families of the deceased who lived in the area. People used to call this exchange and it would light up and then they'd plug and take a uh, plug and put it in the point where they wanted to communicate with. Wow. These are the numbers, it's amazing. Can you play the piano? No, it should be touching. Some parts of the museum are laid out to show what living in Arrowtown was like a hundred or so years ago. It is quite interesting. Arrived in Queenstown, quite a big city for New Zealand, with a population of around 23,000 swelling in peak visitor periods. We are now in Queenstown. We are going to have lunch, and after lunch, we will take a gondola's ride to the top of Bob's Peak. I chose seafood chowder and then chose... What did you choose? Fish and chips. Fish and chips. And some celery. <laughs> and some celery. And some um, tartar sauce. The Skyline Cable Car Ride is definitely a number one must-do experience in Queenstown. We are in gondola and starting to climb.
where I'm standing now, I'm looking down on Queenstown and the lake and there's not a breath of air and the lake is just like a mill pond. I'm so glad we came to Queenstown. It's so beautiful here. The next day we had a cruise on a special steamboat, the Ernslow, which was launched the same year as the Titanic in 1912. The ship was named after the biggest mountain in the region. We chose a cruise with a barbecue lunch on a historical farm. Walter Peak Farm is quite old. It was established in the 1860s. Our tour included a sheep shearing demonstration and a sheep roundup display by the cattle dogs. It's a really important position These are the long words, the biggest strikes on the sheep. The barbecue lunch was exceptionally good. We highly recommend that you include the cruise on the Ernzo with lunch or dinner in your itinerary. The cruise was amazing on the Enzo. It lasted half a day and in the afternoon we went to Kingston. Kingston is a small village. The road to Kingston is very attractive. It winds between the lake and the Remarkables Mountains. Kingston is famous for its vintage train called the Kingston Flyer. The trains operated from the 1890s to 1957 when buses become popular. We walked one beautiful track in Kingston. We wish we had more time, but we wanted to get back into Queenstown before dark. They make the best burgers in the world. This isn't advertising, it really is that good. We visited this burger place a few times. Mm -mm. Prices are affordable, ranging from 10 to 20 dollars. No questions asked, this is five star quality. This place is very popular and there is always queues lined at the front.
other places we visited in Queenstown and can recommend. Kiwi Bird World, because it's the only place to see a Kiwi Bird, the national symbol of New Zealand. Keep in mind, filming a Kiwi Bird in the park is prohibited. We certainly love the botanical gardens in Queenstown. The gardens were created in 1867. We dropped into Patagonia Cafe and the ice cream here was delicious. It is nice. But the best of all was feeding the ducks on the quayside. It's almost 300 kilometers from Queenstown to Milford Sound. We took a tour bus with Juicy. We had a short stop in Tiano. Milford Sound was our number one place we wanted to see in New Zealand. It's a long way from Queenstown, but it's a well worth the trip. We were very impressed with the Fjord National Park. 